You think it's gonna rain? Well, as you can see, I'm getting all rained on and it is beautiful. I am so grateful for it because it got to 96 degrees and I got sunburned. You can see by the white in the sun. That's my Idaho tan there and my Floridian quick red tan there. Uh, so it's been uh, kind of a bittersweet. Uh, sweet in the sense that I haven't seen any mammals today. So I'm really, really glad for that. No dolphins, no turtles, as far as what I've come across. Um, no birds. Uh, I think I might have saw something that looked like a decomposed bird, but um, I didn't put my finger on it. Literally, won't do that. Boy, ow. I don't know if I should be sitting under a tree right now. What do you think? I might have to move in a minute. But um, it has cooled things way down, like 96 degrees today. And um, I was like... Where is my water? So, um, but anyway, I'm gonna keep you posted. Um, this vlog is gonna be really just kind of mainly about, you know, what kind of what kind of uh, marine life uh, or any kind of life that I'm gonna see for the next day or two here in Sarasota area and uh, also some of the uh, other beaches. And uh, we'll see what we uh, run into a little bit later on. And then I'm gonna show you in this uh, vlog kind of what those lives are like in their natural state and the sadness of when you get to see them all washed up, dried up, and dead on shore. All right, so remember from the last video that these images are from dead marine life that have been affected by the red tide. Now, this is not any normal red tide. Let's remember, this is a supercharged red tide from the heavy amounts of nitrogen pollution being pumped into the Gulf of Mexico from Lake Okeechobee and surrounding waterways. All right, so as you can see, uh, there's been a lot of uh, dead marine life. Uh, there was a red drum. a ton of horseshoe crabs, which is just sad. I mean, a ton of horseshoe crabs. Did you know that horseshoe crabs have been around for 450 million years? Isn't it our responsibility to keep them around for another 450 million years? Uh, a lot of uh, cowfish, something uh, as a diver, a local diver, you would uh, definitely recognize, and I'll show you some cowfish. We're gonna go back out to the beach right now. Well, this is absolutely devastating. There's hundreds and hundreds of fish along this particular stretch of beach on the causeway on the way to Sanibel Island. I mean, there, there are perch, catfish, mackerel, pufferfish. As a professional underwater photographer and dive master, I have to tell you that these puffers are one of my most favorite fish to be able to experience on a dive. I mean, look at those eyes. They're adorable. They look like a pet parakeet or something. A fat one. Cowfish, eels. All right, well, this really breaks my heart. If you're uh, really thinking that this doesn't affect our uh, marine life, take a look again.
That is a huge trophy sized tarpon that's been affected by this red tide. I love diving with tarpon. They're so large and they actually interact with you. They're, they're absolutely amazing. You know what I really find tragic is just over here was the tarpon just in the trees behind me is an osprey. Now this osprey has no chance of finding a safe nourishing meal in that. No chance. Just as I made that statement, this Osprey flew directly over my head. Thankfully, I had my Nikon D850 and my Nikkor 200 to 500 millimeter lens to capture this Osprey's descent. Now, the great and unique thing is about this is that the Osprey went directly over my head, so close that I couldn't even barely, as you see in some of these images, keep this bird in frame. This Osprey flew right into the red water and picked up a flailing, or it looked to be a dying catfish. And then this beautiful raptor did two aerial turns completely around me. and landed in this tree. Well, after talking to the Crow Clinic, a wildlife rehabilitation center in Sanibel Island, they had mentioned to me that in a case like this, a osprey that is catching a toxic fish may still have a good chance of survival because hopefully they're also flying off or out of the area consuming fresh or healthy fish from local lakes and other water. Now it's a great idea if you really want to help uh, Crow Clinic with some donations, you can uh, really support some wildlife rehabilitation by visiting their website at crowclinic.org. I'll go ahead and put that information in the description below. Well, as you know, I do not normally support a doom and gloom video, so I thought at the end of this video, I would share with you some very beautiful and thriving local wildlife that are still struggling to survive this supercharged red tide. Please make sure to say no to any and all politicians and or industry that support poisoning our natural environment in any way. Well, I do hope this video ruffles your feathers enough to support you to want to contact your local government, your congressman and or state senator to clean up their acts and support positive environmental protection and change. Jobs are very important and crucial to our economy, but not at the risk of destroying our natural habitat and our natural homes. Because guess what, folks? Those footprints in the sand, they not only belong to the wildlife, they belong to our children. <laughs>